Okay, uh, in this session, we're going to discuss about the Thevenet theorem. Now, this theorem is important uh, for this uh, analyzing the circuit when the connected load is subjected to change. Now, in our case, uh, since we're dealing with the DC circuit, our load will be only resistor. But in case of the AC circuit, you will have inductor and the capacitor and other loads. Now, without this Thevenet theorem, we need the lengthy recalculations, which means it's time consuming without the Thevenet theorem. With the invention of the Thevenet theorem, now our computations or our calculation becomes easy. For example, in the particular network, uh, you have connected the load. And then if that load is subject to change, let's say load A, B, and C. And if you want to calculate the current and the voltage for that particular load, using the mesh analysis, you have to apply three times mesh analysis to calculate the voltage and the current for that uh, load A, B, and C. But if you're using the Thevenet theorem, you have to apply one uh, mesh analysis and then you'll obtain the equivalent uh, circuit of the equivalent Thevenet circuit. Then with this, you can determine the current and voltage for the individual load A, B, and C, which means it uh, reduces the uh, calculation time. This is the advantage that we have with the Thevenet theorem. Now, okay, statement, you can read it by yourself. Uh, now, the, basically, the statement says that you have the linear two terminal circuit and uh, connected with the load here. Now, with the Thevenet theorem, we have to find the equivalent network, yeah, equivalent Thevenet network and voltage source is being replaced with the VTH, which is called as a Thevenus voltage, and then current so that uh, the uh, equivalent uh, re internal resistance of that network is replaced by the RTH, and which is connected in series with the VTH. So in this way, we find the equivalent Thevenus circuit, and then load is being connected. Now, in order to determine the voltage and the current for this load, let's say load A, just fix load A and then uh, apply the uh, voltage divider rule. You'll find the voltage. Once you have a voltage, you can also calculate the current. Now, next step is now to calculate the voltage or the current for the load B, just again replace this load. And then you can apply the same step. In this way, uh, the Thevenet theorem have advantage over the other theorem. Now, how to calculate the, the VTH, the Thevenus voltage, or we also call it as a open circuit voltage. Now, if the load is removed, in okay, we have one figure here. If the load, this load is removed, the voltage at term AB will be represented by the Thevenus voltage, or we also call it as a open circuit voltage. So this is how it looks like. And then after that, we have to calculate the this open circuit voltage or the Thevenet voltage using any circuit analysis technique. That's why the principal thing that you should understand about the circuit theory is that mesh analysis, nodal analysis, super mesh, super node analysis, the Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Ohm's law are the fundamental technique that should be in your fingertips to solve the circuit theory uh, problems. In Thevenet theorem also, we are applying the the any analysis circuit techniques like mesh analysis or the nodal analysis. In superposition theorem also, we have to apply the same thing, which means this, the fundamental principles should be in your fingertips. Okay, and now, okay, the, this is the step to, to determine the VTH. The first step is we have to remove the load and then replace it with the VOC. After that, we have to calculate the VTH using any circuit analyzing technique. And the second step is we have to calculate the RTH. Now to calculate the RTH, we have to turn off all the independent source. Okay, remember that uh, in this session, I'm talking about this circuit containing only independent source. There's no dependent source in this uh, session. I'm turning off all the independent source, disconnect the loads, and then I'm calculating the RTH or we also call it as a internal resistance. Now, 
here to when we are turning off all the independent source remember that voltage source we have to short circuit it to make it zero and if it is current source we have to open circuit it to make it zero okay let's solve the example okay now this is the steps about the steps how to calculate the rth when dependent source exists but we are going to uh, discuss about this later uh, before that okay let's study with the case one when there's only the dependent source only the independent source present in this network so once you calculated the vth and rth your uh, thevenin's equivalent network this is called the thevenin's equivalent network and then if the RL is given, you can connect the RL at this terminal and then determine the IL and the VL. So here are the stay or here are the formula how to calculate the uh, IL and the VL. This is uh, simply the application of the Ohm's loop. Okay, now in this network, we have to find the equivalent thermal circuit to the left of terminal AB for circuit shown below. Also find current what will be the current if one ohm is being replaced by the five ohm see now we here we are applying the thevenin's theorem consider that just now is only one ohm is connected here if five ohm is being connected in place of the one ohm if you are uh, if you don't know the how to solve the how to use the thevenin's theorem you may use the mesh analysis to find the current through Okay, current through this one ohm resistor and again when you connect it with the five ohm again you will connect it uh, you will um, apply the mesh analysis and then calculate the current to five ohm which means you're applying the two mesh analysis uh, analyzing technique for these two loads but if you know how to apply the thevenin's theorem you can find the equivalent network for this from terminal a to b and from this side and then you can just replace one ohm and the five ohm and then determine IL and the uh, VL. Now for this one, okay, let's solve uh, using uh, the Microsoft Word. Okay, in this session, no, uh, okay, now in this is, uh, example, uh, we are, okay, we have to find the uh, VTH first. Okay, first step is to find the VTH. To find the VTH, we have to remove the RL. When you remove the RL, you will have only this part, right? This part, and then let's assume. Okay, uh, let's assume this one is I1 moving in clockwise direction, I2 moving in clockwise direction. Remember that I'm planning to apply, okay, apply mesh analysis. Okay, mesh analysis technique. Now, when I apply the mesh analyzing technique, I'm here assuming I1 moving in clockwise direction, I2 moving in clockwise direction. But in between mesh 1 and mesh 2, I have this current source. Okay, do not consider about this mesh 3. We are removing this RL. When you remove the RL, I'm just going to block this. Okay. Okay. Now, when you remove this RL, when you remove RL, we have only two mesh and two mesh. Then I'm applying, I'm assuming I1 moving clockwise direction, I2 moving clockwise direction. Then in these two mesh, there's a current source in between, which means again I have to apply super mesh. I have to apply super mesh. Now, when you again apply the super mesh, I1 okay is negative uh, negative 12 plus 6 I1 okay uh, I have written the equations directly but I will explain here now when we remove the RL here when you remove the RL so this is the network that we have so I am assuming I1 I2 and then they are uh, moving in clockwise direction but in between these two mesh we have the current source so we are applying the super mesh then i'm applying super mesh here minus 12 plus 6 i1 in this mesh we have i1 plus in this mesh we have i2 plus 4 i2 is equal to zero and then if you simplify this one we get this equation and then we are naming it as equation one and then super mesh 
second step in this node we are applying the kcl so i1 is moving this direction i2 is moving this direction 2 ampere is moving this direction so i1 plus 2 ampere is equal to i2 so i have rearranged this one and then name it as equation 2 so between 1 and 2 i got i2 is equal to 1.5 ampere why i'm interested in i2 because i have to find this voltage to find this voltage i have to know the current through this branch so current through this branch times this resistance will give you this voltage which is same as the voc or the thevenin's voltage a voltage connected parallel to this ab terminal is same as vth right so i got vth is equal to 6 volt now second step is to find rth now we have to find the rth or we also call it as a r in which is to indicate internal resistance now for this one again uh, to calculate the internal resistance we have to remove the rl the rl is being removed and then also we have to remove the independent sources if it's voltage source we have to short circuit this one if it is uh, current source we have to open circuit this one which means you we will have six ohms connect six and six ohms are connected in series and then four ohms connected in parallel with this two six which means six six plus six is connected in parallel with the four ohm so we have to find the equivalent of this one We have to find the equivalent of this. Uh, with this, we get R I N. R I N is equal to. Okay, I'm going to do the calculation for this. Okay, okay, I have calculated the uh, R T H or the R I N. Now, how to calculate this one? I'm explaining once again. Uh, we have to remove the R L, and then make the independent sources to zero which means voltage source i'm shooting this current source i'm open circuiting this one so which means this six ohm and six ohm will be in series so total will have 12 and then it's connected this 12 ohm is connected in parallel with the four ohm so our rth will be uh, this equivalent so i got three ohms now we got vth and then we got RTH or RIN. Now our final uh, Thevenin's uh, equivalent circuit can be replaced with okay with this. So we have VTH connected in series with RTH, and then we have RL. Now previously, okay, we have removed R RL, but now it's connected with one ohm. Now two. If our aim is to determine the current through this one, current through the uh, load resistor, one ohm, then we have to connect it back and then our circuit looks simpler like this. So for this, we can again calculate the voltage and the current for the one ohm. Okay, I'm going to calculate for this. Okay, uh, when the uh, load resistors are connected, then uh, we can calculate like this. I L in this load is equal to VTH divided by RTH plus R L. Now this is the formula to calculate the load current. We got is 1.5 ampere. Now remember that there are two loads, one ohm resist, one ohm load, and then uh, five ohm load. So for the five ohm load again, we simply replace this R L with five, and then we'll have. will have i l is equal to 0 0.75 see this is the only step that we took uh, to find the uh, find the vth and the rth then after that to calculate the i l so it's very easy like very simple from this step we are getting the i l now this is the uh, 
and the application, the importance of the Thevenin's theorem. Now, you can also calculate for the other loads. Okay, now this is not possible, it's five, when five ohm load. Now again, if we replace this load with the 10 ohm, you can simply replace RL with the 10, 20 ohm load, then replace RL with the 20 ohm. Now this is how we should do with the Thevenin's theorem. I hope uh, we have got the concept how to solve the Thevenin's theorem. So if you have any doubt, uh, let's discuss.